Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and this is part two, or advanced sail trim for sailing, or sailaway simulator. Obviously we're in sailaway simulator. Um, going over some more stuff from the, uh, we left off on the beginner's video, if you didn't watch the be uh, beginner's guide to this game and to sailing, you should go back and watch that. Um, as this is going to be a little bit more advanced stuff. And without further ado, I have a video that I want everybody to watch to kind of understand things a little bit more, and you have to hear my voice a little bit less, so that's a good thing. Um, and then after that, we'll come back to the boat here, and I'll kind of go over a few things with the sail trim and some things that you learned in the video, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll see you then. The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Before there were airplanes, before there were trains, there were sailboats. Without them, the world as we know it would not exist. Square-rigged sailboats brought Europeans to America. Their stable decks and massive holds carried the people and supplies that would build San Francisco. But these ships of old had their limitations. They were slow, and they only went in one basic direction, with the wind. Square rig sailboats work um, by using sails as kind of more of a drag device than a lifting device, like a parachute. A lot has changed. Today's sailboats supply very different principles to harness the power of wind and wave. So if you want to master modern sailboats, you better learn some physics. So why did the wind shift? Just because? The Quest team attempted to do just that on a recent sailing lesson at Modern Sailing Academy in Sausalito, California. I think students, uh, when they first come here, they know that the wind will push the boat because they see like a plastic bag being pushed across the street. So they, they can understand right away that the boat can be pushed. But what they have to learn is the boat can also go into the wind by using aerodynamics. Just like an airplane wing, the sail can lift the boat into the wind. So that allows us to go almost any direction we want to go, except for directly into the wind. Okay, hang on, now go straight. Go straight for just a second. We gotta get the boat speed back up. Just go straight. For a so modern sailing's not all about being pushed by the wind. Something is happening at the sail that makes it fly like a wing. And that elusive something is a force called lift. To help us understand what lift is, we've brought in some heavy hitters from NASA Ames Research Center, who just happen to be avid sailors. We call it lift because of the analogy to an airplane wing, I think. Well, now in a sailboat, that's all turned up on end, right? So now what we think of as lift is really, in our normal frame of reference, is a side force. I think a lot of people don't realize that they are exactly an airplane wing just stood up on its side. And granted, it's a floppy airplane wing, but it works the same. When you want to get geeky about it, you can really start looking down at the nitty gritty and really start learning a lot about how the sail works. And here's the nitty gritty. It's called a water channel, and it's one of the best ways to study how wings and sails generate lift. In this channel, filled with moving water, streamlines of fluorescent dye are injected upstream of a test shape. Although air is a gas and water is a liquid, both are considered aerodynamically to be fluids. So the resulting virtual super slow-mo image actually shows us how air would travel along the length of a sail or a wing. Lights off. What I'm about to do is start introducing some glow-in-the-dark dye into the water. You notice that the streamlines on the lower side of the uh, image are uh, curving around the outside of the airfoil shape. Since those streamlines are curving, it has to accelerate a little bit. When it accelerates, it creates a lower pressure, and that's what actually generates the lift. Um, and that lower pressure on the downside of the sail sucks the sail downwards to the bottom of the screen. Essentially, you have high pressure on one side, and 
and that higher pressure is trying to move toward the low pressure side and putting a pressure on, on the sail. That's from Bernoulli's law um, that, that says that the pressure forces and the velocity are related. You generate higher velocities on one side, so the, consequently there's lower pressure. Now you have the pressure difference, and that leads to the force. Bernoulli's principle, named for 18th century Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli, is pretty simple. Here's a way you can see it for yourself. So I'm going to blow over a piece of paper that I'm holding in a curved shape, and we'll see what happens. So you can see how that lifts up. And that it completely relates to the, the flow acceleration over the curved shape and the fact that that higher velocity leads to lower pressure. So as the wind travels along a sail, the sailboat's being lifted or actually sucked towards the curve of the sail, mostly to the side and slightly forward. But the wind generally hits the boat from the side. So why doesn't it just slip sideways? Because sailboats have wings above and below the water. A sailboat, like anything dynamical, exists in sort of a balance of forces. The sails above the water are acting as a wing, and the majority of the lift that they're producing is in a sideways direction to the boat. Um, only a small component of that lift force is actually angled forward. Now, under the water, there's a keel, and as you move through the water, it's also developing lift. Its lift is predominantly sideways also. In a modern sailboat, the keel and sail work together to move the boat forward. It's kind of like squeezing a watermelon seed between your fingers. Your fingers put equal sideways pressure on both sides, but the seed still shoots out in a forward direction. In a sailboat, the sail and keel's sideways forces cancel each other out, leaving only the forward force. That squeezes the boat forward, and bam, we're sailing. But as any novice sailor will tell you, it's harder than it sounds. In, in physics, they say you have a vector this way, you have a vector that way, and you have a resultant vector, which is the direction in which we are going. Tricky stuff. Tricky stuff. But it's fun. Because now we're... OK, so we've captured the wind, and we're zipping along in the direction of our resultant vector. And that's all there is to it, right? Not so much. An experienced sailor knows that fine adjustments to the curvature of the sail, called trimming, make it possible to harvest the most lift and control its direction. OK, now look at our mainsail. Yep. And you see the little telltales that were off the back of the sail? They've disappeared. They're They've gone, gone away. So that, what that tells me is we're not positioned the sail right to the wind. Okay. And so we're not getting the maximum lift out of the sail, and we're actually going slower than we can be going. Okay. Now they're starting to come out. Starting to see a little bit more. And now we have the sail properly trimmed for the course that we're on. By trimming the curve of the sail, a skilled sailor is essentially shaping the size and location of the lift generating area. By creating a deep, generous forward facing curve, a sailor can produce a large, well directed pressure zone. But if the curve is too deep or the leading edge too abrupt, the air molecules flowing around the sail will stop following the curve of the sail. When you put an object into a flow, the flow streamlines try to follow it if at all possible. If there's sharp, sharp, sharp angles in the flow, the flow particles are just not able to make that turn. They have too much momentum, not enough ability to get around the corner. And that's called separated flow. That would be stall in the case of an aircraft. It would be a luffing sail in the event of on a boat. OK, so if you want to learn modern sailing, there's a lot to think about. And as far as physics is concerned, we've just barely scratched the surface. But aerospace engineers like Steve Smith and Kurt Long live deep down in the details. For them, sailing is about the circulation flow field, viscosity theory, and starting vortices. And in these areas, even they don't always agree. Oh my heavens, there's all kinds of controversies about sales. It's a very complicated subject. Um, many people, in order to get from point A to point B, don't need to know all of the intricate details of the sale. They just need to know from experience, when I do this, the sale works, and I get from A to B. My father introduced me to sailing when I was very young, probably five or six years old. My dad used to joke, and despite the fact he was also an aeronautical engineer as a career, he used to say that all this in a quarter would get you a cup of coffee. 
Ain't looks nicer than Benjamin's right now. You're looking good. Um, a sailor has an intuitive feel and a, and a practical understanding that gets him by. And he doesn't really need to understand the detailed physics that much to be a successful sailor. Pace is good here. I'm working. Well, perhaps you don't really need to know physics to operate a modern sailboat. But as the Quest team learned out on San Francisco Bay, a little understanding of how the sail and keel work go a long way. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest. And that is the quote that I have written uh, summarizing that video. Yeah, I'll just read that real quick. That's funny. It's true, though. It's very true. Uh, <laughs> I grew up into this world of uh, sailing and everything like that and being at a yacht club and whatnot. And this is what I have learned right here. This is a very simple summarization. Um, but no, the, the video, uh, thanks to uh, QGD for that. Um, I hope I don't get copyrighted for having their video in my video. But anyway, I think... That was kind of necessary to kind of show you guys the physics behind sailing and how it compares to an airplane wing, and that's all you got pretty much is airplane wing made out of uh, many different materials. You know, you can have it made out of carbon, mylar, uh, a lot of different fabric materials, uh, dacrons. Um, but like they said, you know, for the most part. Uh, if you're just going from point A to point B, you kind of just know how to trim the sails in, and as long as you're moving forward, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when it comes to racing, however, which is where I I come from, every you're constantly trimming sails. I mean, you're you're steering the direction that's best for you to get from point A to point B, but at the same time, your crew is constantly adjusting their weight. So if I had crew on board right now. I wouldn't want anybody sitting down here, I'd want everybody sitting up here, and that's in order to get the, uh, the boat, it keeps the boat from heeling over or tipping over as much, and it gives me a little bit more forward, um, power, so to speak, because the keel is deeper and everything like that. If the boat heels over too much, if I go out here real quick, I can kind of show you this. If I was overpowered, I had too much sail up, and the boat was over like this, you know, a little bit more. It takes that the depth of that keel that you learned about in that video that counteracts the force of the sideways motion on the sails. You know, I've said it. You know, the keel cancels out the sideways force of the sails that way, resulting in a forward motion on the boat. Um, well, the more this boat tips over, or as we sailors call it, heels over it takes that keel a little bit more out of the water so if your keel is about five feet underwater when the boat is upright completely upright and you start tipping over or healing over like I've said like you know uh, like this that's no longer five feet underwater that's about three three and a half feet underwater so it takes a lot of that effectiveness of the keel away and now your boats going a little it's slipping that's what we call it it's slipping a little bit more to the side and you're not making as much ground up on say the target that you're aiming at up ahead of you um, so that's why you see in videos like the one we just watched a lot of the crew members on racing boats sitting up on the high end here uh, is try to, is just trying to put as much weight on this high end to try and counteract the force of healing essentially um, other than that what did I not get into in the last video? That was the beginner's guide, so I really just told you guys how to raise and lower sails and how to trim with the telltales. Make sure your telltales are flying straight back. Um, more advanced trimming would be kind of your, your backstay right here to start with. As you can see, I'm pretty tight on the backstay right now, about 83% because I'm heading into the wind. Now, what the backstay does, and I have, uh, I have a backstay on my boat, adjustable backstay. Um, it works a little bit better on these fractional rig boats like this one. Uh, fractional rig, this sail right here only goes up to about this part on the mast. It does not go all the way up to the top of the mast. Uh, my boat is a sloop in real life, a Pearson 26, so that this jib actually goes all the way up to the top of the mast. 
Uh, but still, it, it, having an adjustable backstay it still gets a little bit of bend out of it. Now, what the backstay does is it pulls the mast back, this, this whole mast right here. So when I'm pulling on these lines right here, it's putting tension, it's pulling this entire assembly backwards towards the stern of the boat. And that tightens everything, obviously. If you have a little bit of sag in your foresail here, and you pull those lines really, you crank them down pretty tightly, it's going to tighten everything back. It's going to pull everything back towards the back of the boat. And that's helpful for uh, going upwind into waves, um, really high winds, uh, when you want to flatten everything. Um, like I've said, when you're when you're in some high winds you want to flatten the sails and when you're in low winds you want to get a lot more curvature to the sails, a lot more belly to the sail. Um, I guess another thing I could go over is over here, oops, not that far forward, over here, okay. I might have to draw this this one out for you guys. Um, we didn't go over this last time, uh, the L Hall and the Cunningham. This is all on the main sail right here, this this uh the back sail, uh, for beginners. Uh. <laughs> but if I draw this out here, we'll get rid of this crap here. Um or not. Uh I, I kinda wanna get rid of that. <laughs> uh shit. Alright, whatever. We'll do that. So anyway, uh let me get a brush here. Or pencil. Yeah, it'll work. Now, the outhaul, if I select this line right here, my main outhaul, I'm at 36% because it's light winds. I don't really, I need more, a little bit more curvature in the sail. This outhaul, I guess I could get a better uh, angle if I go out here. Maybe not. Come on. There we go. From the top down. The out haul pulls the sail back on the boom here. Uh, we've been over the boom, like I've said, if you're not paying attention to where this big part is right here, the boom, it's going to hit you in the head, it's going to go boom, you're going to go eh, you're going to be knocked out. Um, so you got the mast and you got the boom attached to it. Uh, however, you know your sails just do not attach up to the, the mast and everything and you're ready to go. You have a lot of different adjustments you can make. One of them is the outhaul, like I'm going over right now. So the outhaul pulls this trailing edge of the, the the bottom of the mainsail back on the mast, or you can also guide it forward and let it go forward. Now, when you let it forward, it's it's slacking it basically. You're letting slack onto the sail, and it's going to have a lot more curvature. If you look at my cursor right now, it's going to be a little bit more curved. And if you pull on that outhaul, it's going to really flatten it out, and you're going to be able to almost put so much tension on it that you can follow a line and draw a straight line right down the center of your boom. Um, so essentially, let's see if I can do this. So you have your boom. We'll draw that in red. Uh, I should be able to get a brush. There we go. Yeah, that's shitty. Give me this one. There we go. So you got your boom in red. And as far as the sail trim and the outhaul, we got the out haul. All right. So when you tighten that out haul, you're making your mainsail less curvy and a little bit more flat. So it looks like this. This black line lined up along your your boom and what that does is in heavier air heavier winds it allows you to take a lot of the power out of the main and just really flatten everything out um, now if you're in really light air you want to let that out haul out and coming from the forward leading edge of the boom you get a lot more curvature to that mainsail it looks something like that it's not perfect obviously um, but that's what the outhaul does essentially uh, let's go back here way back. Now the Cunningham is a little bit different. You can see I got the Cunningham full on right now. If I go over here, the Cunningham tightens this whole leading edge of the sail right here. 
on the mainsail. And the same, same effect usually, uh, unless we really are just bobbing around and don't have any wind whatsoever, my Cunningham on my boat is pretty much all, all the way on. Um, I will let it out if we're really just bobbing, bobbing around looking for air. Um, but other than that, I can I can trim enough with all the other adjustments on the boat that I don't really need to play around with the Cunningham as much. Uh, but it, it's kind of critical. It you know you, you learn about it. Uh, reefing we went around the last time. That's just lessening the amount of sail area you have. Um, the jib track. There we go. So if we go up here. Alright, we'll go over here. You can see how our foresail, the jib, the sheet that controls how the amount of tension that we have on it right now, it runs through this little block down here. You can kind of see it goes underneath this pulley wheel on this adjustable block. So this slides forward and backwards. If you watch, maybe I can, uh, here we go. So I'm pulling it backwards and now I'm letting it forwards. Pulling it backwards, and I'm laying it forward. This is the lead car for the jib. And then this goes back, this sheet continues to go back to our winch, which we, uh, our, our members on board the boat here can, uh, can pull the tighten the sail in, pull the sail in, or they can lay it out to let the sail out. Um, but if we go back up here, you can kind of guess physics wise what this actually does when I lit it out. Where are we? Jib lead car. So when I lit this all the way out, it's basically taking this trailing edge and it's letting it off the side of the boat, resulting in more of a curve to the sail. And when I tighten this in, pull it all the way back, more for heavy air. So that's all the way back. That flattened this edge of the sail right here, and it has a little bit more twist. As you can see, it's affecting my mainsail right now. Let me bring that back in. You can see the twist in the jib right now, how it starts from down here and it just lits off, or lits off on the way up to the, uh, the mast here. And uh, if we watch our speed while we do that, we're doing about seven and a half right now, and let's play around with that jib lead car actually. Lit it out all the way and watch what happens to our speed. So it went up a little bit, seven, 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 six, nothing much. But if we pull that back about halfway, it's still not affecting it that much. So really, it's just a trim is really just like a, a point one here and there, you know, as far as speed. Um, as long as your your telltales are flying back, you can play around with things. Uh, what else do we got to go over here? Am I missing anything? Halyard tension, uh, something else we can go over. You see my jib halyards at 100%, so I do have the jib pulled all the way to the top of the mast. Um, however, I can tension that. If I really crank this down to 110%, that's pulling on this part of the sail, this leading edge of the sail, that gets pulled up to the top of the mast. And I'm putting a lot more tension on this, that also helps flatten the sail for when we're in heavier air. Um, so I could really flatten that sail out, or I can lift some uh, some of it off and get a few ripples on the leading edge of the jib here, and that will help me get a little bit more curvature, a little bit more power out of the sail when it comes to lighter winds. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic. I mean, you got to kind of understand physics a little bit, but when lighter air, you want to let everything out and let it sag a little bit, but you still obviously trim around your telltales. And uh, heavier air, you want to tighten everything up. And uh, that's about it. Now, you can see you can tighten all your halyards. Your code zero halyard, jib halyard, everything like that. Uh, let's see, travelers, mainsail traveler. Uh, in very light air, lighter air than this. I mean, I got probably about 10 knots of wind right now. Uh, this mainsail traveler, as you can see here, this is just another adjustment I can make with the main sheet to get a little bit more twist out of the main sail itself. So in light air, I really want a lot of twist in that sh in that sail, and then in heavier air, I want it to be really, really flat. Um, so right now, I got the main sheet cranked all the way down. I don't really need to worry about anything. Um, 
But if we go to our traveler, I can kind of show you. So I can, oops, I can pull this all the way up to the windward side. The windward side of the boat is where the wind is coming from, so the wind's coming out over here. Or I can take this and I can dump it all the way off to the other side of the boat. And now it's on the leeward side, uh, the opposite side of where the wind's coming from. And you can see that sail is luffing. There's no uh, pressure in it right now, so I need to bring that traveler back up. And we'll leave it about 50%, which is about half haul for right now. Um, I'm not really racing right now, so I'm not trying to get the best trim out of it. Uh, essentially, to get more twist in lighter winds, what I would do, again, looking at these telltales, trying to make sure that they're always flying straight back along the sail at all three locations, or four locations, or how many locations you have, um, to make sure the flow on the sail is correct, is I could lift the main sheet off here, so you can see that sail's not trimmed in correctly, the telltales are falling down, the sail's flopping all over the place. But I lift the tension off the main sheet, and now I'm going to take the traveler and trim it in with the traveler. So I'll just keep pulling that traveler in. There we go. So now the telltales are straight back. And what that allows for me to do, by pulling the traveler up more than pulling the, uh, the actual main sheet, is it allows me to get a lot more twist off of this mainsail and you can see look at that so this part of the, the mainsail I pulled on the traveler all the way up here to pretty much this seating location right here so now you have this going down the center line of the boat and then the sail as it goes up it just lifts right off and up here it's kinda like at an angle like this so that's the twist the sail starts about at this angle and then it just keeps working its way up and ends up at this angle at the top and that gives you a lot of power, um, and especially in lighter airs. So if we go up here, I look down the sail, look at that twist right there, just like a bird's wing. And we got a decent amount of twist on the jib as well. Um, however, in heavier air, you want less twist, you want the sail to be flatter. Um, so in heavier air, I would probably take this main sheet traveler and I would dump it to the other side of the boat and then take our main sheet and tighten that in and and that gets rid of a lot of power um, in heavier air and that's just what your traveler does a lot of people don't even bother with a traveler especially if you're just cruising and you're going from point A to point B I know growing up on my grandfather's boat we just we never played with a traveler it was always locked in the the center of the boat and we just did everything with a main sheet. Um, if you're racing however you can get a lot more generated power by playing with your traveler and uh, yeah just take some uh, playing around with things obviously. Uh, the next part of this video is going to be the racing and the racing tactics video. I'm going to introduce you guys also to the race editor. I've made a few uh, races already in the uh, in Sail Away Simulator. Uh, they're not going to happen until about June or July of this year, so uh, there's no rush on it, but obviously it was nice that we have a race editor now and we have access to it and we can make our own races. Uh, other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit more advanced sail trim video. There are some other things I could get into, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, there are some secrets I have as well that I'm not going to get into ever. So. <laughs> To each his own. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. And again, another shout out to KGED Productions for letting me use their video on my video, and uh, you know, kind of an introduction to the physics involved in sailing. And hopefully, you guys learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part three.